eternity is in our hearts. And when eternal God is displayed or poured out or quickened into our temple, and He's placed on the throne here in our lives, everything shakes. Everything that's not in alignment begins to shake and gets over into alignment. Because time and space has to come into alignment with the eternal realms of God. And that's who we really are. Our spirits are eternal. They were before the foundations of the earth and they will be after the earth is gone. And so today, Lord, we thank you that you have gathered us unto you. And we come hungry. We come thirsty. We come really ravenous for more of you, for a more understanding and revelation because you said that this would be a day of revelation and quickening and it would flood our hearts to another uh, realm with you and that we would be willing to submit and yield to the Spirit of God as we stand in the gap for our region, we stand in the gap for our state and our nation, that this is your day of honor and glory. We cast our vote for you, God. We cast our vote for the majesty and glory and honor of the King. We say we only have one King, and it's King Yeshua, Lord of all the earth, King of the universe. And we refuse to agree or align with anything other than what you are quickening the Spirit inside of us to, Lord. And we speak into Christians' lives, believers' lives today. Lord, to listen, to lean in, we say Shema. Shema, people of God. Shema, people of God. Hear and obey. For the Lord is God. The Lord is one. Thank you for the anointing to obey you today. Thank you for the anointing to hear you. Thank you for the anointing to speak for you today, Lord. Thank you for the anointing to receive the glory of your majesty as you cover our state with the golden anointing oil that drips out of heaven over your people. has been defeated and you have to stand in that place <coughs> in this region or you'll be wore out again and so I wrote that about the single eye and our friend drew that single eye I don't know if y'all saw it or not but that's how I feel right now at this moment this moment of time and Kimberly welcome home from Israel we're so happy to have you back and maybe next week you can give a report on Israel be prepared to do that I'm going to be continuing because I don't know how long it's going to take me to get this out Kaz is going to be ready to come up right behind what the spirit is, is saying this is the year of the whirlwind. Amen. Amen. I've never heard such more of an accurate word than this year being 
the year of the whirlwind. And um, I believe, you know, as we started off in Texas with that word, and many of you were there, and many of you received this word uh, that we would ride the whirlwind was one of the words, and that was our round little, uh, what is it called, button that we received riding this whirlwind. And that's a part of it. And the Spirit of the Lord saying to get into the eye of the whirlwind. That's a part of it. And He's saying, be the whirlwind. That's a part of it. It's just a lot of revelation concerning the whirlwind and who we are in it, who we are, what what the world, uh, whirlwind's the purpose. But I heard in this month, because it is the month of uh, Keshwan, in this month of the, of the tenth, the tenth month, I mean the eighth month, I'm sorry, the eighth month, is new beginnings toward so much. You understand it's new beginnings in your life. It's new beginnings of the anointing getting stronger in your life. And this is the month of the anointing. Now when it's proclaimed and decreed that this is the month of the anointing and it's the month of the flood and it's the month when the beginning of the flood and the end of the flood there is something huge for us in that. It's a month of healing to the utmost. When the earth is in this much turmoil, we can't operate in the same anointing that we've been in. That's right. It's impossible because darkness is getting darker. Yeah. Evil is getting even more evil and manifesting its evil. So now it's the body of Mashiach, the body of the anointed one, that will rise up with the anointing to destroy that which is coming in the, to the earth. It's been destroyed by the Mashiach already, but we have to enforce it. And as you know, when Derek was here on First Fruits, and we began this month, and he really didn't talk a lot about us. And I love that when he comes, this is what he does. He talks <coughs> about the Messiah. Yeah. He talks about the Son. And he talks about the Father. Yeah. And, Laura, you asked me if it was taped. I don't know how... Who, we Laura or Laura? Laura oh, okay. asked if it was taped. I don't know who got that on tape, even on their phone. But... I don't think we did much. Well, I'm not. I believe for fresh equipment to capture this year because too much great things are going on here, uh -huh. and the word of the Lord is to be captured. I mean, it's to be stewarded, yes. and um, we need that. We just need that. Uh, but what he said, bottom line, was he talked on uh, Psalm 2. He talked on Psalm 110. And he was talking about the Lord himself, the Father himself, putting his Son into position in Zion and setting his king on his holy hill. And it was very important for that kind of progression that people are trying to be kings before their sons. And 
I don't know if he said that, but that's what I heard. But that's what I heard, you know. And so I, I, he said so many wonderful things that all of you could get up and share, and we did last week, on what he was speaking to us through that meeting. And it, it was some wonderful things that he said. But bottom line, how do we understand the authority to carry the authority as a king until we can flow in a relationship with the Father as a son. <coughs> Sonship first. Yes. Then the kingly authority anointing. Yes. Son, sonship is intimate. And it's understanding who we are in Him. There was a word that specific sentence that he said, Pam. Do you remember that? Uh -huh. uh, he said, bottom line is this. And he said that about, I bet you Vicki will have it. Or, or maybe you'll have it, Jan. Uh, when he said the last night, a son does this and a king does this. It was just like bottom line in that. And I have it in my notes. And I, it's a son receives and a, oh, a son receives, learns how to receive from his father, and a king has decrees and, and um, takes authority over the enemy. And it's, you know, you, from the sonship role is not how you really move with authority over the enemy. You talk to the father and you receive. Yeah. And so we've got that a little backwards and the Lord's going to help us get it right so we can have what God's telling us to. And He was anointed for both positions. Even when He came into the earth, when He was born, they brought into Him the gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh to anoint Him in this position as a son, and later to be a king. He said, receive as a son, speak as a king. Speak as a king. Receive as a son, yeah. speak as a king. Yeah, that's right. Because we have to speak to the mountain. We can't think of that mountain. We can't, wow, well, I, I wish that hadn't happened to me. I wish that wasn't so bad. I wish this hadn't happened to us about this long thing. I wish it didn't happen. <laughs> we have to speak to that disease, to say, be thou removed and be cast into the sea. And it has to obey us. Hello? Why? Because out of the friendship with the Lord that we have received from the Lord, our intimate place in Him as sons and daughters, we can move into that place. So... I was thinking about all of that. And I was thinking about the anointing and how the increase of anointing will have to come to pass. And I was thinking about how many people are anointed with oil all the time. <coughs> we anoint. There's nothing wrong with anointing with oil. Because God has set it up in His Word. If you're sick, call on the elders and they will pray and anoint you with oil and you will be healed. But it's not the oil. <laughs> and it's not the elders. And sometimes it's not your faith. But it's the yielding to the Holy Spirit. Say yielding to the Holy Spirit. Yielding to the Holy Spirit. And I ask the Lord, bottom line, what will be the, how what does this new anointing look like? Well what does the increase anointing look like? And he said it's simply yielding to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now that's not hard, we think. But that's that's what it is. And we're going to talk about that as this month progresses and, and, and uh, what, what is in your heart, Cads, that God said it? How did He speak it? 
Living in the whirlwind. Okay, living in the whirlwind. Living victoriously at that in the whirlwind. I he didn't know this, but I put on, on this living the lifestyle of the anointing. It's a lifestyle of the anointing. It's a journey of the bride. And so as I was thinking of this, I thought, why God do so many people have so many problems and they're up and down? I'm talking about believers now. Up and down and up and down and up and down. And I heard the Lord say, it's the anointing that causes us to be steady and steadfast in the Lord. And he said, I want you to share a few things at how I brought you through in December, just a few weeks. I will have completed 39 years in the Lord. And I will begin on December the 5th I will begin my 40th year in the Lord. Yes. And it's a generation. <laughs> and you know what? I love Him more today than I did then. And I loved Him more at that point than I did than anything in, in the world. There's been a pursuit after Him for 39 years. A pursuit after Him and a knowing that he is pursuing me. I mean, that's a knowing. And so I, I, that doesn't mean everything was perfect, and that I certainly wasn't. But I just wanted to share a couple of things that you may have missed in your foundation. Mm. These are foundational things. And it's not to compare your walk with my walk, because that would not be wise. So that's not what I'm after. Everybody has their journey. And everything that has happened to you, good and bad, has made up the unique person that you are, that God has made you, and that He will use it all. All things work together for good. All things who are called according to His purpose. I believe that with all my heart. Every single thing. That's right. And so I went back and I, I thought about, you know, how I love God, even though I wasn't born again until I was almost 24. I love God. And people don't understand that. That you could talk to God and hey. have a form of a relationship with God. Hey. But I didn't understand the personage of Jesus. You know, I didn't understand about being a bride. I didn't understand about not having fear. Because I, I was a person of fear. That's why I loved God and had to talk to God. But I wasn't delivered from fear until I, the day I was born again. And God just went down. I mean, it was like a mass deliverance, the day I was born again, he went after the root of fear immediately. There wasn't even a walking out of there. I was a trembling person, and then I was free. When I asked him to come in, I gave him my life. And if I was delivered, then he delivered me from more things as we walked. Thank you, this. Jesus. But that was a stronghold. That was a stronghold, a stronghold in my life. It, it tried to rule my life. And many of you know what that is. And in, you know, there's certain things that God gives you in the Word in your life, say, 20 years ago, and continues to give it to you. And He begins to write it on your heart. He writes it over your mind. It's absolutely directs you in everything that you do. Well, there's certain things in my life that continue. 
like a whirlwind. And so they are, it's the good word of God that keeps coming around in my life over and over and over. And I realize it keeps me steady on the path. And so I thought, well, maybe some of the people that came into the kingdom didn't have those truths, you know, that it didn't prepare, it wasn't something that could propel you. And um, I think of the Psalms, and I can go, I mean, I memorized the Psalms once, 150. Wow. I memorized them. Wow. And they were, I could, I could walk in them, I could speak them, I mean, they were in me, I, I sang them, I'm like, <laughs> now I could, I can't quote them. Like, I, I mean, you know, I, I can quote a lot of them, but I certainly can't quote 150 of them. And I can't do 119. I remember it took me, Psalms 119, it took me four months to memorize them. I memorize that, I memorize it short. I know, yeah, I know. I can't remember. Hey, four months is pretty short. Um, yeah, and so, but, but see, that's not operating right now. But because God was putting it down inside of me, He pulls that, those things as truths. Maybe not verbatim, but as truths and as principles. And uh, I realized on top of that that I prayed in tongues all the time. I don't do that now. But for 15 years, I was like a locomotive. When I first got saved, about 15 years, 14 years, I prayed in tongues all the time. If I wasn't talking, I was praying in tongues. I should have been listening sometimes. <laughs> but that's what I was doing. Now I'm listening. But it was building up my most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And it was producing a shield of faith. And I wouldn't take anything for that. No. That was grace. That was something God put on inside of me. So I know praying in tongues and memorization of the Word and meditating on the Word are two things that were just gifts that God just put inside of me to do. And I know everybody does that in some form, but some songs are just like written. I mean, they're just written on my heart. And they just come up like that when a situation happens, you know? Yeah. I mean, when you got broken, your car got broken into, I'm sure Psalms 91 just said, you know? And so, I mean, it, it just, and it turns everything when it happens. And so, uh, I, I, I was thinking of that, and the Lord spoke to me about three major components that were very, very important. And one was that the Lord taught me how to go to, how to have hind speed on high places. <laughs> and so this was like, you know, I, I've told you, I, I don't know how many times we look at the ascending of the Lord, the ascension of the Lord, and when He was taken up and He sent back the Holy Spirit, and then he, the Spirit Himself is teaching and training us to constantly ascend, Right? So that we can descend with the word and with power and with particular, particular anointings out of that place. And so that was quickened to me whenever I was huh, a year, a year in the Lord, maybe a year. And he gave me the scripture in Proverbs 15, 24. And he says, the way of life winds upward for the wise. It's a way of life. It winds up. It's constantly ascending. Your idea of any scripture will be constantly ascending. There will be an anointing for that. Proverbs 15, 24. That he may turn away from hell. Hell is a gravity force. It's not just a it's just not just a place one day. It's, it's something that is filled with darkness that tries to pull us down. It tries to bring oppression. It tries to bring depression. It tries to separate 
you from the rest of the body. It tries to, uh, yeah. You believe it's a whirlwind? It's a whirl. It's a part of a whirlwind. Whoa. It's a part of a whirlwind. Trying to suck us in. We're ascending. That's what. That's a whirlwind, and hell is going this way. And so, <coughs> the scripture says, Second Samuel twenty-two. 33 and 35, I remember I was one year old in the Lord when I found this. And I found an old Bible, and it said, you know, January 1976. Uh, well, no, I was just, I was just, a, I, I was a month old. That's what, how old I was when I found this, a month old in the Lord. God is my strength and power, and He makes my way perfect. Damn. He makes my feet, like the feet of a hind, the feet of a deer. He makes them. He sets me <coughs> high places. He sets me on high places. He teaches my hands to war, and my arms can bend a bow of arms. Now, I was just, I was just young in the Lord, mm. but I remember feeling this desire to go up to ascend. To go up a mountain, to be with the Lord, to ascend. I mean, it was just like inside of me. And when I saw that, oh, He makes my way perfect. No matter what happens, no matter what happens, He makes my way perfect. That was like put inside of me when I was little, when I was a young girl. And then He says, I make your feet like the feet of a deer, so you can climb anything I put you in front of. So, that was in my heart. We left Hawaii and we went to Buford. I was, um, I was two, two and a half years into the Lord. And I met Darlene Heath, who is a prophet of God. And that's a whole other story. But we began to study the Word of God together. And the ver first gift she gave me was Heinz feet on high places. Yes. Hannah Yard. Hannah Yard. Her name is Hannah Yard. I don't know how to say it. She gave that to me because she knew that I had come out of a fearful place. Huh? Little but your friend. Her journey. And who has read that? Who has read that? Well, you know. You haven't read that, I'm surprised. Miss Artist, I'm surprised. And you need to read it because of how he's brought you through it. You will so understand every portion of it. And um, it's an allegory, of course. But that changed my life to see into the scriptures how one can be transformed. It was about a little girl who had a deformed mouth and crooked feet. Totally from a family of feelings. Or fear, I don't know how they call them. Feelings or something like that. In the valley of humiliation. Who were bound in this place. That's how I felt. And that's how I felt. And there was a chief shepherd that wanted to come and would ask those to come with him to the high places. And all the fearlings and the family hated him, despised him, threw rocks at him, tried to, try to get him away from the, from the valley. But she escaped with him and she began her journey. Yes, yes. And this journey is the most amazing journey. It was my journey. In every chapter, it was my journey then, and it's my journey now. Even though I'm not little miss afraid anymore, I stand in the gap for those that are. That's right. That's good. And I see who they are. I see where they are. I see why they're on their way to the mountain and are so excited that God takes them down into the valley. Yeah. <laughs> this is a part of learning who he is and who we are.
to let us see what's inside that needs to be healed. And it's a magnificent, some of the chapters are this, and you can sort of understand uh, the furnace of Egypt. Who's ever been late? That Egypt means the besieged place. The forest of danger and tribulation. The sea of loneliness. See, even in the midst of a lot of people can feel that way. The precipice injury. The valley of loss. I know that place. The grave on the mountains. Wow. I remember that. And then it was the place of anointing. That was a particular precious part in that book. Because he actually met her there. And he took, he says, let me read this portion to you. It's really sweet. It's short. Once much afraid had reached the place of anointing and the high places, she's transformed, no longer needing human love because it's been replaced in her heart by something much, much greater. Let me see if I've, I've passed that place. Wait just a second. Maybe I have. <clears throat> yeah. The part of the place of anointing. This is how it said. She bent forward to look, then gave a startled little cry, and she drew back. There was an, indeed a seed lying in the palm of the shepherd's hand, but it was shaped like a long, sharp, pointed thorn. The seed looks very sharp, she said. Won't it hurt if you put it in my heart? Oh. He answered gently, It's so sharp it slips in very quickly. <clears throat> but much afraid said, I've already, uh, but much afraid, I've already warned you that love and pain go together. Wow. You need to write that in your Bible. Yeah. Love and pain go oh. together. True. For a short time at least. For a short time at least. If you would know love, you must know pain as well. She had two companions that the shepherd gave her to walk up this mountain, to go on these, this journey to become something she wasn't become all that she was made to be. Let's put it that way. And suffering and sorrow were her companions. You've understood that this past three months. Suffering and sorrow had to go along with your walk to overcome. And when they got up there, everybody got a new name, a new nature as they overcame each obstacle. Much afraid looked at the thorn and shrank from it, because we'll do that. Then she looked at the shepherd's face. See, one glimpse of the shepherd's face, and we'll see. If we can really see his face, we'll see. <laughs> She looked at the shepherd's face and repeated his words to her. When the seed of love is in your heart, is ready to bloom, you will be loved in return. This is what most people don't understand how to receive love. How to really receive love. And a strange new courage entered her. She suddenly stepped forward bared her heart and said, Please, please, dear. His face lit up 
with a glad smile, and he said with a note of joy in his voice, Now, you will be able to go with me to the high places and be a citizen of the kingdom of our Father. Hmm. We just rally about the kingdom. We want to have kingdom victory. There is a process. Yes. There is a journey. There's that word again. You don't like that word, do you? Yeah, I love that word. Process. He has. He's learned to love the word of process. And even though the fullness of everything that we are when we receive Jesus is there, the new creation is there. And it's not about contending with the old and the new. It's about receiving Him and letting Him be all that He said. <laughs> then He pressed the thorn into His heart and it was true just like He said. It did cause a deep piercing but it slipped quickly in and suddenly a sweetness that she had never felt or even imagined before went through her and tingled her whole being. Do you remember? I do. It was bittersweet though. But the sweetness was stronger than the bitter sweet. Yeah. She thought of the shepherd's words, it's so happy to love. It is so happy to love. And her pale, sallow cheeks suddenly glowed pink and her eyes shone. For just a moment, much afraid, didn't even look afraid at all. Because the love of God changes us. Yep, yep, yep. It changes us. So, that is a story that as she's reached that place of anointing, transformed. And so I want you to be thinking of asking the Lord to put a greater love, to let His greater love be to transform us. Please. Lord. Because you see, um, Help me to love. it's the seed every time a revelation is planted in us. The Word is a seed. And when it goes down in us, it's sweet to the mouth sometimes, but then God requires of us change. Bitter. Be changed and transformed by it. So it's a little bittersweet because it's going to say, Old man, you're not ruling here. You've been buried. Yeah. I'm not continuing with you. No. I want all of what He has said I will be is in the sea. And I want it to bloom. And agree with it. Her new name now, as she's going and getting to the high places, after so many things that she had to lay down, move on, not think that way anymore, but think like He has made her. Now she's got a new name, a new nature, and it's grace and glory. Jody used to write me <coughs> letters, and it did not have Billy Alexander on the envelope. Yeah. It had grace and glory. Oh, it, uh, and it had not craven fear, but fearless witness, because that's what yeah, craven yeah. fear got his new name and it was fearless witness. And that's who we are. Amen. That's the that's that's right. That's what God calls us. That's what God calls you. And so sorrow and suffering have been transformed into peace and joy. And the place that they used to hate so much and always dreaded it. The Valley of Humiliation was the very place that from the high place with a new nature and a new name could look down upon a city and instead of hating those family <coughs> members that used to try bitterness and anger and all of that, they saw the family in great need of the king. Oh. That is what happens 
the transformation and suddenly realizes that she had simply assumed them to be evil and malicious. They were actually mi miserable and in spiritual pain. Yes. And she, her whole heart changes. Her whole vision changes because then it's the vision of the king. Yes. And see the anointing changing us, transforming us, causes us not to have the vision of Billy anymore, the vision of Jody or the vision of Linda. What is Kaz's vision? Well, what's your vision? What's your vision? The Lord's vision. It's the vision of the king. It's the vision of a king for a whole region. And how do we, how do we, how are we ready and prepared to be a part of the vision of the king? And so, this is our, this is our journey this season. Corporately, we've had opportunity uh, over the years uh, that the Lord brings us unto Him and He says, I want this and I want that. Mm. And why do, you, why do you hold on so tight? This is what I want to give you instead. Mm. Why do we hold on so tight when the Lord requires the 